the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Billy Mills Orchestra, and our new vocal feature, The King's Men. The show opens with Holy Smoke, Can't You Take a Joke? start the day off is to get out of bed on the wrong side, especially if your bed is right next to an open window. So here, climbing back through the window in his pajamas, holding his ears against the cold, as his wife holds her ears against his language, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Dead rat, the dead rat, rat of an architect that climbed the window right next to a bed. Here, help me get in through this window, Molly. Oh, you poor dear. Oh, oh the dirty... Th- McGee, watch your language. And shut the window. It's cold in here. Oh, it's colder out there. Oh. Dead rat, the dead rat. I'm so sorry, dearie. How'd you happen to fall out? I had a nightmare. <laughs> All night long, I dreamt that I couldn't get to sleep. <laughs> what a night. It was terrible. Well, that's too bad. Well, Hurry up and get your clothes on, dearie. I'll have breakfast ready in a jiffy. And I'll tell you right now, Mrs. McGee, I'm not going to shave today. You're not? No, I'm not, and that's definite, see? All right, sweetheart. I don't blame you a bit. Well, I... Huh? <laughs> what was that? I said I don't blame you a bit. You're just as handsome to me with or without a shave. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, every other time I wanted to go without shaving, you says, get in there and shave. Now... Never mind what I used to say. I could be wrong, couldn't I? You could be wrong. <laughs> hey, I'm going back to bed. I'm still dreaming. <laughs> no, no. Come on to breakfast. Just put on your robe and slippers. What? You mean you're going to let me come to breakfast in my bathrobe? Certainly. And here's the morning paper. You can read it whilst I make the toast. Well, well, well gee. <laughs> Thanks, Molly. I... Hey, uh, what are we going to have this morning? Same old wheatsy bitsies, I suppose. Well, it was you that insisted on our getting the wheatsy bitsies, dearie. Uh, it was? Yes. You said they'd improve your performance at first base. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a nasty note from Judge Landis. <laughs> and I ain't the only one either. <laughs> I'm tired of Wheatsy Bitsies, Molly. Why don't we have wheat cakes and sausages once in a while? That's just what we're having this morning. Huh? And I got some genuine Vermont maple syrup, too. Oh, boy, Vermont maple syrup. When did you get that? Yesterday. I didn't see it. Well, you wouldn't have recognized it. It was packed by the Farley Packing Company and labeled Republican Sack. <laughs> dad rat, the dad rat. Now, what's the matter? 
I thought that was a pretty good joke. <laughs> yeah, but you know how radio is. Now, I got to think up one to annoy the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you really don't mind if I don't shave, Molly? Not a bit. Not a bit. Don't want me to shave no, at all? No, no. I just want you to be comfortable and happy. Now, come to breakfast. Okay, wait till I shave. <laughs> Answer the door, dearie. I want to start fixing the wheat cake. Okay, I'll get it. Who can be around here at this time? Oh, there, McGee. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> don't give me that cheery good morning stuff, Gildersleeve. If you can't be your old sourpuss self, don't talk to me. My old sourpuss self, eh? Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> My, that's a handsome bathrobe you have on there, McGee. Yes. It, it is a bathrobe, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, and that's a neat idea there, using a piece of old clothesline for a belt. <laughs> I imagine it's very comfortable. Well, you're wrong. It ain't. It cuts like a knife. <laughs> McGee, breakfast is nearly ready. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Mrs. McGee. A lovely day, isn't it? It is not. It's terrible. I never see such a lousy well, by day. By the up. way, McGee, the reason I stopped by was to bring you these ducks. Ducks? Oh. Yes. A friend of mine went out hunting yesterday and gave me more than I could use. Here you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, forget it, forget it. After all, there's nothing like having good neighbors, is there? <laughs> well, good day, Mrs. McGee. Good day, Pippa. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hey, what's got into that guy, anyway? I think he ought to go see a skin specialist. What's the matter with his skin? Oh, it's getting so thick, I can't insult him anymore. <laughs> Well, throw them moth-eating mallards out in the garbage can and let's have breakfast, Molly. Oh, well, all right, dearie. I'll throw them out right away. Anything you say. Good, and I got... What was that? I said anything you say, McGee. You know best. <laughs> oh, no, I don't, Molly. <laughs> Not always. Why, of course you do. Oh, I... I do? Certainly. Well, okay. Let's keep the ducks, then. <laughs> No use throwing away good food, is there? No, and I'm sorry I suggested it. Oh, forget it, Molly. We all make mistakes. You're just impulsive. <laughs> I know. Now, come on and have your breakfast. I've got some nice country sausage. Can't we have a minute's quiet in this house? Here I am, half sick with the indigestion, and I can't even eat my wheat cakes and pork sausage in peace. Oh. <laughs> Calm yourself, McGee. I'll see who it is. Come in. Bad rest. Hello there, daughter. Hello, Johnny. How you fix for Valentine's? I got some got some beauties here with cupids on them, but I'd advise you not to take them. What's the matter with the cupids? Oh, too risque, daughter. The kids ain't dressed decent. Oh. Hey? Don't believe we want any old timer. Personally, I can never decide between the comic ones and the sentimental ones. Never know whether to wow them or woo them. <laughs> Johnny, and that's exactly the way I hear it. It is? Yep. Detail for detail? Yep. Word for word? Yep. Uh, well, not quite, Johnny. The way I hear it, one feller says to tell the feller, say, hey, says, I see where they had quite a cold snap down south. I'll say the did, says t'other feller. Got so cold, the bull weevils were swapping a bale of cotton for a pound of wool. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, didn't you get up kind of early today, Johnny? Oh, no, this is not early for me. I used to get up at four o'clock when I was a bugler in the army. Bugler, eh? Yep, and a good one, too, if I do say so myself. Even got decorated by General Pershing. And as he was pinning the medal on me, he says, Boys, he says... There's nobody in the army that knows the bugle like McGee. Bugle knows McGee, I was known as an end Oh, my. Bugle knows McGee, the brainiest blower of the battle bazooka that ever bulldozed a battalion of brave boys to bolt bed and blanket for bath and breakfast by blaring a battle of my bellows on the brass bagpipes, bringing bravos and bouquets by my brilliant performance of ballads at banquets, benefits, and barbecues, and boosted as the Beethoven of the bugle from Mr. Brown's way back in Europe. What's that I smell? Your cakes and syrup.
While we're waiting for Fibber and Molly to return, I'd like your attention for just a minute. Tonight, I have a pleasant surprise for all you good friends who have been buying Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste and liquid wax. Our sponsors have declared a consumer dividend on these famous polishes, a dividend for our customers, which gives you one-third more for your money. On most dealers' counters right now, for as long as they last, you'll find extra-large packages of Johnson's glow coat and Johnson's wax containing one-third more than the regular sizes. You pay only the regular price. The extra one-third is your consumer dividend in appreciation of the way you've been buying Johnson polishes. This dividend offer is good for all important sizes, pints, pounds, quarts, gallons, and so forth. But remember, dealer stocks are limited. They'll go fast. So ask your dealer tomorrow for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste and liquid wax in the extra-large containers that give you one-third more for your money. Cakes and sausage good. I'm so dead red at stuffed I could hardly get dressed. Look, I can't even get my belt around me. That's the strap off your wristwatch, dearie. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wondered what made that buckle tick like that. I see you shaved, too. Yeah, I didn't want this Orson Welles guy to get the idea he'd started a fad. <laughs> oh, boy, am I stuffed. Well, come on, let's go for a walk, Molly. All right, dearie. Let me help you on with your coat. Huh? Oh, there. Mm. Well. My, you look so well in a Mackinac. <laughs> but I guess you're just the outdoor type. Oh, go on, am I really? Oh, shucks, honey. Hey, where's my other mitten? <laughs> oh, dear. McGee, if you lose those mittens once more, I'll have to put the string back on them. <laughs> okay, I'll be careful. Let's go, Molly. Oh, my, my, it's lovely Hey, out. don't walk so fast, Molly. I'm too full of breakfast. All right. Here, let's hold hands. Huh? Oh, oh Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we ought to uh, do look, the... McGee. Huh? Here comes Mrs. Uppington. Uh-oh. Look at her walking along with her nose up in the hmm. air. She holds her head so high, she's got a double chin on the back of her neck. <laughs> well, I'm afraid we'll have to stop and talk to the old cat. She's... Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? So nice to see you. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And uh, Mr. McGee? Hi, Uppy. <laughs> what you limping for, Uppy? You got a Charlie horse? Well, if she has, I'll bet it's a thoroughbred. <laughs> well, it's really a result of trying to form our Wistful Vista Concert Orchestra. Oh. Yes. You see, when Maestro Mills took me to reclaim some of the band instruments from the, um... Uh, oh, now, what do you call those quaint little novelty stores with the three big grapefruit over the door? Oh, uh, could they perchance be, uh, hawk shops? <laughs> oh, yes, hawk shops. Oh, my... <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, I always believed those were some sort of fruit and vegetable stores. <laughs> Well, they are kind of uppy, in a way. That's where you go to trade your old ten-carat turnip for five berries. <laughs> oh, boy, am I hot tonight. <laughs> well, what's that got to do with your limp, uppy? Oh, oh, yes. yes oh, limp. really, I, I'm almost ashamed to tell you it's so ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> come on. Uh, well, you see, the back seat of my town car was simply filled with band instruments, and I, well, somehow I got trapped in a tuba. <laughs> such a time as we had. <laughs> and to extricate me, Dr. Mills had to play three choruses of Ain't You Coming Out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, I guess I am such a silly girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <And> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> I wish he'd got caught in a violin instead of a tuba. Huh? <laughs> I was all set with the crack about the cat and the fiddle. <laughs> Well. well, come on, Molly. Keep walking. I'm cold. We don't get Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Well, hello there, folks. Stop for a little constitutional? No, just taking a walk. <laughs> is that so? Well, walking is great stuff, all right. Yeah. But that isn't the way I get my exercise. Uh-oh. <clears throat> folks, in the year 1900 A.D., a little child was born. And as he toddled across the kitchen floor of a modest little home in Omaha, Nebraska, <laughs> he saw in his childish imagination a vision. A vision of himself as a grown man still toddling about a kitchen floor. <laughs> and that floor is your floor, folks. 
And that man stands before us tonight, Harlow Wilcox. <laughs> you take it from there, Harpo. <laughs> What in the world are you talking about? I was about to tell you how I got my daily exercise. Oh, well, how do you get your exercise, Mr. Wilcox? Yes, Harlow. As the Indian chief said to his long-lost brother, who he hadn't seen for 25 years, because he'd been working in the mint, posing for pennies, how? <laughs> Why, uh, it's simple. Setting up exercises in the morning, a brisk canter through the park, hour or so of handball in the gym, and, uh... Well, go on. Don't you get any exercise uh, delivering those big cans of, uh... oh, you know. Oh, yes, that too. Well, glad to have seen you looking so well, Fibber. Keep it up, pal. We're all proud of you. Well, so long, Molly. Take good care of that old Fibber boy. Uh, good night, Mr. Wilcox. Can you imagine that guy? <laughs> well, as the president says, when they asked him about his third term... Molly, do you realize he didn't say a word about Johnson's glow coat? Why, he didn't, did he? Or how marvelous Johnson's self-polishing glow coat is for linoleum floors? And did you hear how he talked about me? They're proud of me, he says. An old fibber boy. Well, I don't see anything wrong in that. We are proud of you. Why, hey, what is all this, anyway? What's what? Everybody being so dad ratted nice to me. First Gildersleeve comes along... Ah, there, good day, short, sharp, and ship shape. Good day to you, my dear. Hi, Boomer. Been looking for you, charming people. Want to present you with a couple of tickets to the preview of Pinocchio. Oh, how nice. Oh, come off of it, Boomer. You don't give nobody nothing. What's the angle? There is no angle, worm. <laughs> just because I love you, chum. <laughs> now, let me see. Where'd I put those tickets for Pinocchio? Pinocchio, Pinocchio. I think it's all a jokey <laughs> Now, let me see. Here's a letter from my nephew, Agamemnon. Says he would have passed the bar examination, but he flunked in dry martinis. <laughs> Handful of uh, crossword puzzles. Ah, oh, yes. I was saving those for a brainy day. Hmm, what's this? Oh, here's a funeral notice of an old friend of mine. Poor lad. He was an expert at telling mushrooms from toadstools. He thought. <laughs> yeah, so here's a neat little stiletto. Hope to play a game of mumbledy peg on a certain party's epiglottis tonight. Well, well, imagine this. Here they are, two tickets to Pinocchio. <laughs> Why, not at all, my dear. Glad to do it. Always been an admirer of yours and your handsome little husband. Good day. My handsome little husband. Oh, Molly, come on. What goes on here? I'll get a nasty answer out of somebody if it takes all the king's horses and all the king's men. Are the king's horses here? No, but the king's men are. Huh? Oh, oh, that's swell. Folks, we present the king's men who will sing a beloved old American classic, The King's Men. Oh, MacDonald had a farm, 
farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on this farm he had a daughter, E-I-E-I-O. Salesman here, salesman there, Harlow Wilcox everywhere. Lost ball here, lost ball there, here ball there, ball there for high ball. Cuss, cuss here, and a cuss, cuss there. Here, cuss there, cuss there, for my face, fuck, fuck here, and a fuck, fuck there. Here, fuck there, fuck there, for fuck, fuck, for for here, and a fuck there. Here, for there, for ever, what for him? Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And when he saw the salesman there, E-I-E-I-O. Boom, boom here, and a bang, bang there. Here, boom there, bang there, we're buckshot. Salesman here, salesman there. Harlow Wilcox everywhere. Lost ball here, lost ball there. Here, ball there, ball there, we're high ball. Cut, cut there, cut, cut there. Here, cut there, cut there, we're bang, bang, put, put here, put, put there. Here, put there, put there, put, 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 put here. Here, put there, put there, put, put, We're nearly home. Aren't you feeling any better? No, I ain't. Dad dreaded why'd you make me eat all them wheat cakes and sausages, Molly? Uh, wasn't that terrible of me? Oh, I'm such a bad girl to you, aren't I? Awesome. Hey, I wish I knew what was going on around here. There's so dad dreaded much sweetness and light, I'm getting a little suspicious. What's the matter, Molly? Oh, here comes that little girl from across the street, McGee. Good. Maybe I can pick a fight with her. Now, McGee, pick a fight with somebody your own size. Well, she's just about the size of the fight I want to pick. <laughs> Hi, little girl. Hi, mister. What you doing? Taking a walk. Where to? Oh, no place. Hmm? I says no place. Not walking anywhere. Well, gee, then how do you know when you get there, hmm? <laughs> now, listen, sis. I ain't in any mood for polite chit-chat. Now, let me pass. I got to finish my walk. Okay. Can I take a walk with you, please, mister? Hmm? Can I please? Hmm? I like you. <laughs> No, you can't take a walk with me. This is walk for my health. Oh. Well, remember what Confucius said. What did Confucius say? Confucius say, quote, Man take long walk, matter of health. Lady take long walk, matter of form, unquote. <laughs> I don't believe there ever was a guy named Confucius. Me either, I betcha. Huh? Hmm? Don't you think Confucius ever lived? No. Huh? <laughs> no. I think he was the little Mandarin who wasn't there, I betcha. <laughs> What's so wrong, mister? Now, don't forget I'm going to marry you when you grow up. <laughs> You're going to marry me when I grow up. <laughs> when I grow up? Hey, did she say that? Why, now, that... Now, calm yourself. Calm yourself. We're almost home. Oh. Oh, there's Mr. Gildersleeve's great Dane. Ah, uh, he's brought you a stick, McGee. He wants you to throw it for him to fetch back. I'll throw it for him. Here, Hammer, give me that stick. I'll throw this so Dad ran it far. By the time he gets back, he'll be a great, 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 great Dane. <laughs> there. Go fetch it, Hamlet. Oh. Heavenly days, McGee. Look what you did. Huh? Broke a wind in Mr. Gildersleeve's house. Well, Dad ratted it wasn't my fault. I just threw it where the dog told me to. You're perfectly right, dearie. That dog should be taught not to give people sticks to throw and break uh, windows with. But just to be safe, we'd better get in the house. No, oh, let's stay right here. I don't give a darn if I broke Gildersleeve's window. I hope Gildersleeve does get sore. I've been just pining for a crossword from somebody all day. Well, here he comes, McGee. This ought to be good. The minute he lands with his right, I'll cross with my left. <clears throat> Give him the old Dempsey one, too. Uh, uh, ooh! Uh, stop shadowboxing, McGee, before you knock yourself out. Well, I'm glad I finally got... McGee! Some... Did you break my dining room window? <laughs> well, uh, you see, Mr. Gildersleeve... Now, let me handle this, Molly. <laughs> yes, Gildersleeve, I did bust your window. So what? It was a peach of a shot if I ever saw one. <laughs> you mean... <laughs> I'll bet you didn't do it on the first try. Why, he did too, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Dad ratted Gildersleeve, I did, I tell you. Uh, I just took that stick and wound up like this and, and let her flicker. Uh, like that. Oh, gee, Gildersleeve, I, I didn't mean That to... was splendid, McGee. You've got a wonderful eye. <laughs> 
But, Mr. Gildersleeve, that was the stained glass window in your dining room. Why, it's ruined. Yes, I know. Shake hands, McGee. Ah. If you had to sit at my breakfast table every morning under that stained glass window and see my mother-in-law in technicolor... Well... <laughs> Chuck's Gildersleeve, I... I'll bet you can't make it three out of three, McGee. Huh? Come on, try it again. Oh, oh, now, wait a minute there. Come on, McGee. See if you can hit that little window up there on the left. Huh? Upstairs. Way up there? Yeah. We'll surprise my wife. She's taking a bath. Oh, <laughs> oh no, thanks, Gildy. I'd like to, but no, no, I better not. Oh, scaredy cat. I ain't either a scaredy cat. Oh, here, stop it, you two. Control your energy. The marble season will open soon. <laughs> Just send us a bill for the broken windows, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no, forget it, folks. I enjoyed it. What? Well, thanks a lot, McGee. <laughs> My, I wish I could throw an old stick like you. <laughs> that does it, Molly. That does it. That absolutely does it. Does what, darling? And never mind that darling stuff, too, either. I want to know what's got into everybody. Uh, hey. Molly. Yes? Look me in the eye. Yes? Did you go and buy that fur coat after we decided that it cost too much? Is that no, the why you been... No, no, dearie, I didn't buy it. No, I guess you didn't. That wouldn't explain why Boomer and Wilcox and everybody's been so dad ratted nicey-nice. Molly, for the love of Mike, what is it? I can't stand all this stuff. Everything is too pleasant. I ain't used to it. Please, Molly, what is oh, it? Oh, heavenly days, McGee, don't you know? What? Why, this is your birthday. My birthday? Oh, <laughs> why don't somebody tell me these things? Here's an interesting letter we received recently from a lady in Kentucky. Since using Johnson's glow coat, she writes, I've decided it should be listed not only under household hints, but under beauty hints as well. I could hardly believe my eyes when I beheld what glow coat had done for our drab-looking floors. It was amazing, this new beauty, and it took hours off my work, giving me more time for relaxation and personal beauty care. Well, it's naturally gratifying to any manufacturer to get letters like that, and the truth is, of course, the product itself has to merit them. That letter was written because Johnson's self-polishing glow coat actually does do wonders for drab-looking floors, especially kitchen linoleum floors, without any work of rubbing or buffing. It does save hours of cleaning. It does give more time for relaxation and personal beauty care. And it will do these things for you. So why not buy a can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat tomorrow? older? No. The only thing that makes me feel old is when I think of the wonderful inventions that have been made since I was born. Autom automobiles, radio, television. I'll bet one of these days we have television sets right in our own automobile. Oh, no. Yeah, imagine driving along in your own car and seeing Fibber McGee's face right on your dashboard. Oh. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Right next to the choke. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night at this same time. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.